Greetings, I am Louise Palanker, and on today's episode of Things I Found Online, comedians and friends are exploring video gaming culture. Video gaming is a microcosm of life, and so it brings with it all of the joy and beauty and kindness and misogyny and assholery and pedophiles that we know in the actual real world. Uh, so we're going to delve on into it. My guests are Ryan Tab, Aaron Linker, Merck Staskum. And uh, online we have with us a, a very famous video gamer who we are to call Glisa, although I've been told that's not her actual name. But tell us about your video, your YouTube channel. What's that called? Uh, I have a YouTube channel called Fractions of a Penny. Fractions of um, a Penny, which is oh, not a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, it was, the name's based on the fact that that's how many, uh, how much money you get per view on YouTube. <laughs> mm, Brilliant. I like that. That's Never. nice. Uh, so we're going to begin with a new feature. I don't know if I told you about this, Dina, but we have a new feature, which I've created. It's called the top one list of the week. Um, we decide what makes the top one list and we select only one because that is enough. So this came from Listverse. You know, the internet loves lists is the joke. Oh yeah. <laughs> In case you're playing Ooh, along at home. <laughs> five lists the internet loves. Yeah, the internet <laughs> <is> the <laughs> <laughs> so the number one list of the week is... 10 Weird Things Nintendo Sold Before Video Games Nintendo was formed in 1889 and they did not sell video games. In fact, the company was pretty porny. <laughs> they <laughs> sold whatever would sell. Merks and Aaron, would you please go back and forth with uh, the top 10 <laughs> things that Nintendo <laughs> sold before video games. All right. Take it away, guys. Top 10. Number 10. <laughs> <laughs> Of ten, <laughs> it's playing cards. Ooh, and top nine uh, is nudie cards. Do you, no. Can you describe what those are? Does anyone know? Yeah, a nudie. Well, which one? It'd be like the nudie card would be like like Pokemon for card. Playboy. It, yeah, but there'd be like <laughs> a nude girl on the back of David Court. You know what? <laughs> You must. This guy collects everything. You should see his house. <laughs> yeah, nudie cards. I think that's how kids looked at porn back in the day. Yeah. So they tell me. That makes sense. Uh, all right, go Close ahead. Those were the days. Number eight. Um, number eight is instant rice. Out of nowhere. <laughs> what kind of company this was is, Nintendo before? They were, this is Japanese. Japanese. Card. Japanese. This, this kind of like card, a, nudie card, instant rice company. The Walmart of Japan. <laughs> yeah. I think seven really brings it home with. A corrupt tax taxi company. So were they selling corrupt <laughs> taxi companies or were they, they, were, they a corrupt were a taxi company? Yeah, they were a taxi company and they did not pay their employees. <laughs> so uh, employees. It's a good business model. <laughs> <laughs> Extreme profits. Number six is knockoff Legos. This one I understand. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Duplo, right? Blocks that stick <laughs> right? together. Mm -hmm. Do we Why consider not? Duplo a knockoff Lego? No, that's, it's that's, that's by the Lego like Duplo company. company. That's just a giant Lego. They're trash, but... They're not knockoffs. Don't, oh. don't start this debate. <laughs> oh, there's the knockoff Legos right there. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm pretty sure they got cool. different shapes All right, for Number the five is right. my favorite, man. Number five, the love tester. All right, so that was like you'd go into a bar and you'd both hold, do you remember this, Dina? And Whoa. you'd both hold onto a thing oh. and you'd look into each other's eyes. David, you remember this? And uh, it, would, it would go... <laughs> It was really just checking your pulse huh. to see if you oh. were nervous to be around somebody. Mm -hmm. but, I feel like those kinds of things still exist. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. Like the ones that like test your grip. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I have one in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a jar that I cannot open. <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep going, guys. You're doing well. Uh, number four is the El Conga, an electronic drum machine. Want. Oh, no, that one's really nice, actually. I like that one. I, just for Christmas this year, guys, want. Why L? Uh, it, maybe it's a lady conga. E L L E. It is twenty eighteen. Or it was just a cool way of playing, like you know, with fun with Latin languages. El conga. Oh, I think that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, but but just spelling it Wouldn't like it be La French conga? version of. She. Well, it was El conga. <laughs> and yeah. number three, <laughs> you would think. Number three, we have vacuum cleaners. Okay. Again, that's the a Walmart. Little, that's a little homey. That's not. That's yeah. not bad. Well, to clean up the rice. Number two. <laughs> number two. It's, okay, number two so. is office supplies. It says <laughs> that was we that, supply ninety nine percent of bureaucrats. <laughs> Those yeah, are office supplies. Like had a Xerox machine and some toner. Yeah, the one on the lower left literally looks like like an NES, like the original yeah. like, console. Oh yeah, maybe That's they weird. were the same color palette. And number one, 
And, I, and I'm going to need a visual on this. There oh, we go. This Thank is you. fantastic. Yes. Oh, the wow. Ultra Hand. It's now, one wow. of those, like, you, you squeeze it and it's a boxing glove at the end kind of deal. Is that it? It reaches Except things on high claw. shelves. Oh. And, oh, just kidding. Okay, it's got like the spring kind of. Mercs, look. it saved Nintendo. This thing Funny. was a top seller. They sold a lot of Ultra Hands. Huh. I can see it. Yeah. I can see that. It just grabs things for you, huh? And if you had an Ultra Hand, you could reach into your parents' topmost shelf and find their Ultra Hand. Because <laughs> they probably have one. <laughs> but they keep it on their top shelf so yes. they can't use it? It's a conundrum. <laughs> or they have to buy two? Mm. That's <laughs> Nintendo's plan. Exactly. There we go. All right, so let's, re let's review the history of gaming and why <laughs> games are marketed for males. Can we at least all accept that games are marketed for males? I think a lot of games are marketed for males, not all games. What do you think, Lisa? Uh, yeah, I mean, just, uh, just if you watch uh, an advertisement for a game, they're just, they specifically try and target the target demographic of video games is like males, like, I think it's like. Yeah, I, 12, I like oh, 12 to 14. 25 or something. Yeah, 12 mm -hmm. to 25. I think mm -hmm. I think so too. Because it's it's kind of like hardwired in men to just go forth and conquer. And so the, a lot of the gaming has those that that kind of feel to it where you just really feel like you're empowered and that you're shooting things and taking things and ta being dominant. And that's kind of just a male hardwired trait because i don't want to i don't want Tetris makes me feel so powerful <laughs> <laughs> well here's the thing you know i think that tetris is um the actual opposite of that game type in terms of what it what it does to your your brain chemistry because the reason i think that a lot of women like tetris is because in tetris you're fitting things together and in like first person shooters you're you're blowing things up so I just think that there's just a well. The poetic. marketing is they used to market video games to um, families, mm -hmm. and Tetris was back when they did that. Exactly. So um, you had Frogger, so and it's seen as more of a just, uh, androgynous game, right? Because androgynous. Of that, I think. Did you hear our doorbell ring, Lisa? That was exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're not. We're not actually just playing. That means a video it's game. time for Facebook fun. <laughs> Can I, think, I, can I brush up against the, the, the thought that, that, that for men it's intrinsic that they're just going to be out there dominating, conquering, killing? Because I, I, I do feel like a lot of it's coming from marketing. I feel like it's a popular thing that men are already told and then they're just capitalizing on that, that already being taught. But don't you, when you look at, like, let's say you look at three-year-old boys playing, they're going to play that way because that's just instinctively how they are. They're going to pick up a stick and wave it around like it's a sword or a gun. And I, I just think certain things are just part of human nature. So I mean, mm -hmm. I did that as a kid, too, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Awesome. I think generally speaking, it works as a rough guideline. Yeah, it, it's not a, a lot, not a law, but a, a rough mm -hmm. guideline. Yeah, and we yeah. and we do know now more than ever that everyone exists on some sort of spectrum, and you can yeah. have traits that are more feminine or ma more masculine, mm -hmm. and you know across the board. Uh, so Dana just arrived. Hello, Dana Eagle. Talking about sticks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we, I own sticks. Do you own a stick? What kind? I do. Well, we're Fauntleroy over here. In like her sticks. when I go hi hiking, right? I I usually try and find a stick that I like. I have a stick and a truck, a <laughs> stick collection and a truck collection. <laughs> and somehow my parents didn't know that I was gay. Huh. Huh. <laughs> hmm. Do they now? Uh, I think they got it figured out. I Are think they, they cracked the code. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's going to be helpful for future generations. Uh, sticks and trucks. Um, <laughs> So we're going to review um, gaming history a little bit by, well, actually, we're going to just look at Riley's rant. So this is a YouTube that, I, that I'm that i going to play for you where a dad kind of, his daughter was sort of making some very important points at the toy store when there used to be toy stores. Now kids just have to do it in front of Amazon.com. But <laughs> when there used to be uh, toy stores, you'd see like a pink row and then you'd see all the other colors. And sort of Aaron and I were talking about this earlier, how the way things are marketed for girls is that, you know, the assumption that girls like pink. I was never that type of girl. Dana had sticks and trucks. Um, I like pink. You like pink. I like pink. Right. So here's Riley's ranch. She's at the toy store and she's just had enough of this. Boys, well, boys want both. But why do you think they do that? Because uh, cause the companies who make these try to 
try to trick the girls in, into buying the pink stuff instead of the stuff that boys want to buy, right? Right, but, but you can buy either, right? And boys can buy either. If boys want to buy pink, they can buy pink, right? Yeah, so then why do all the girls have to buy princesses? Some girls like superheroes, some girls like princesses. Yeah, some boy like superheroes, some girl, some boy like princesses. Absolutely, so absolutely. Then, right. Why does all the girls have to buy pink stuff and all the boys have to buy different color stuff? That's a good question, Riley. Okay, so she's running companies now, I think. <laughs> that is hilarious. Wow. Um, yeah. She's she was fantastic. right on the money, I mean. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. smart. And outraged. Yeah. She, yes. For both yeah. sides. For yeah. both sides. That yeah. was nice. like a mini Gloria Steinem. Yeah, because I think, you know, when I was a kid, I wanted the, the kids that looked like boys. I didn't want the girl version. I didn't want the girl version of anything. I, I just thought that that... that wasn't cool it didn't feel like me right and i still hate dresses and now I, i'm i'm of an age where it's like i'm just not wearing a dress it's a gift if i arrive you know <laughs> you're <laughs> thrilled to see me i'm not putting on a dress happy wedding i didn't want the girl version of anything except for girls ah <laughs> wow <laughs> so much to learn from that sentence <laughs> so there's a there's a clear video gaming bias against women and so the question is why and aaron you were speaking to me about this uh, a few days yeah, ago yeah i i mean i think it to a certain degree it has to do with just like the received culture what it's it's been this gender divide for a number of years and Basically, video game companies are just kind of following the footsteps of that. But it's really clear, at least when you look at like the history of video gaming, that there was a point at which video games specifically started marketing towards men, um, basically to turn a, to turn a profit. Because I th what I understand is that after like the video gaming crash of 1983, mm -hmm. um, whereas previously, as as um, as the as our friend was saying before, Glisa, yes, yes, Glisa was saying before. Um, games were marketed for families such that um, the games could be played in like like a, a bar situation mm -hmm. so arcade machines and you could have like the family fun at home when the video game crash of 83 happened it was clear that that model wasn't working so they just kind of looked for a new market and that was men that was boys for them and so suddenly all the video games were appearing on the boys aisle in the toy store mm -hmm. and the girls were kind of, I mean, I don't, they didn't really give anything to the girls specifically. Well, uh, did we have like go. Barbie rides a horse? Do we have that? That's the thing is like, so as time went on, like when they, when they did develop games specifically for girls, they just kind of went for the typical like female stereotypes, like, um, like, I don't know, horse riding simulator, Barbies and like. Just stereotypical stuff that they that they I mean the, the, clearly these people didn't know what women wanted to play, right? So is is the is the problem or is is the history that men dominate most fields or that men especially dominate technology fields and that men create the games that they would love to play? You know where did where did this kind of split off into it being a, like a bros club? Right. Um. Dana, I I have a I have a theory. Yeah. It's based on no research at all. Sure. Uh, my theory is that some of it does have to do with some of the natural inclinations. Like I think men do like to conquer and feel powerful and tough, and video games give you the fantasy of that alone in a room where no one could dispute you. And hmm. women like to connect. And I, there's not, I mean, I do, um, I do Nintendo, I'm not bragging, but I do Nintendo Wii Just Dance. Because nice. they say, <laughs> you should dance like no one's watching, so I dance with no one watching. Sure, sure. And uh, <laughs> the machine constantly asks me, like, do you want to go online and dance with other people? And I'm like, no. No, I don't. No, this is, I just, this, I just wanted to do this yeah, right now. Yeah, here dancing. Yeah. This is my exercise. Yes. And the whole thing where uh, the Xbox Connect or, or whatever it was would, would take a picture of you dancing. No, no, no. No, oh. don't. 
No. You should see there are some no. there are some bold souls online <laughs> who do not realize like this is not oh, a wow. moment that needs to be memorialized. My neighbor used to be a professional dancer, so I was asking him about one of the dances I couldn't quite get, one of the steps I could and he's like, you know, you should try putting a mirror by your by your television. And I did that and it ruined everything. Everything. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I didn't need to that. see that. Suddenly, you're watching. Yeah, what was going on in here was sure. very different. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You were throwing down. Yes. Yeah, I was. I was tearing up the carpet. Uh, the apartment you grade carpet. Uh, yeah, I I really like that you you said that it gives men that feeling undisputed in a room alone. Yes, and it's reminding me of uh, the games that I've played have been really team oriented games. And there's a lot of people that struggle with that feeling like they can't just win the game by themselves. Like they're forced to. Like League of Legends is a game like where you have like six or people on a team. Whereas if, if one person is playing by themselves, right. then that, that game just melts. You will like be guaranteed to lose. And I think that's part of that. It's, that, it's like, like that uh, individuality, that like independence that I can beat this all by myself. Right. Yeah, I, but there is a social aspect to online gaming for for people that in, enjoy be, being a part of a team, and, and team sports mm -hmm. kind of shows us that a lot of people really do enjoy doing something together and conquering something together and feeling that bond with the people who are figuratively in the trenches with you. But um, it also, you know, gives rise to a way of speaking that's hardcore, nasty, or just, I guess. I keep coming back to terms like male, but women can be bitchy too. So well, damn um, straight. It's, it's probably because most of those, the game designers and stuff in history have been male. Right. I, I would mm -hmm. imagine in the eighties, there weren't any female cause that's just how the world it was and still is, but it was worse back then. Well, they didn't encourage you in that way either. Like you don't hmm. see any like smack talk in Farmville. <laughs> I, I, bet, I bet you could find some. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I bet it gets pretty. Filthy. Well, is, is there smack talk on real farms? <laughs> I need some seeds, you bitch. Hey, Weezy, <laughs> Weezy, Weezy I can add, add a little bit to this. As a child who um, grew up and played video games, you know the original games that came out in the '80s were all small, like very um, strategy-driven dr games because mm. they, they, you couldn't have fancy graphics. So right. you had like so was... Frogger, you had Pac-Man, you had Dig Dug. Pong. Oh, I love Dig well, Dug. Well, Pong was even oh, Dig before that. Pong was but amazing. There, there was a game that came out and it was pretty much the time when I stopped going to the arcades and it was called Street Fighter. Oh. I don't know if you mm. guys Changed remember the that. course of gaming. But that whole game was, like, it had six control buttons. Ooh. Like, the video games before that, there was, like, one or two buttons. Yeah, you, know, you they were directional. Like I don't want to have to action. take a class. Yeah. So I think that was the beginning of maybe the male, you know, in influence in the gaming design. Right, that it was just going to actually be fighting in a street. You know, which is when things have devolved to where conversation is no longer at all at all useful <laughs> for the situation. But um, they, they became less cute after that. Well, the gaming community um, tends to be hyper male and not that girls can't be bitchy, but uh, does a headset. I try. Does a head. I know. Keep at it. Does a headset create a cone of secrecy? Does the actual gameplay numb the mind into spilling out someone's inner thoughts? Did this cone of toxicity give rise to Donald Trump? Because it's there could be a kid sitting on a couch across the room who's engaging in this, who's your son or your or your dad, and he's got the headset on and he's talking quietly into a microphone that's very close to his mouth, and he's hearing things that are racist and sexist, and he's maybe saying things that are racist and sexist, and no one else in the household even knows it, but he's kind of immersing himself in that that sort of like trash talk. Aaron, I, I mean, I. I think there is a degree to which just not just a headset, but just like the kind of gaming gaze and stare that one goes into when one's really involved mm -hmm. creates a kind of I mean, yeah, you're, you're zoned in. So you, there's a, a degree to which the outside world is somewhat shut away. Um, but to go further and then to suggest that somehow like this is what gave rise to Donald Trump. I think that's a really tough connection to make, especially considering like. I don't think these gamers were the ones that were voting. I, th I think mm. I think mm. Weezy's right, honestly. I would have to disagree. <gasps> it's a coarsening yeah, of what's votes. acceptable, I Thomas. Know, yeah, if I know only we could vote people, by console. Every single like <laughs> vote like white trash kid from my like hometown who vote like voted for Trump and were like proud of it and they were huge gamers and they were mm -hmm. huge into like the racist 
crap online, like swearing at people over the microphone, and they're like, oh, you know, I don't have any repercussions because I'm anonymous. Nobody knows who I am. It's just a gamer tag. I think you could pretty fairly assume that there's a correlation between people who vote for someone who seems to be racist and bigoted and play video games and say things that seem to be racist and, big- and bigoted, but I don't think the, the connection is inherently mm. that they play video games. I think the people no, who play no. video games and suck vote for someone who sucks. But, the, but like, those people, the people feel like it's normal don't. to be like that, though. Those kids, I but know. They, but I'm saying they suck without video games, and they were going to vote with it for him without video games because they just suck. But I don't they, know. That's, that's what they're I think. More, I don't know if they'd be as, as a... Uh, Are you saying low scores cause people to vote for Trump? No, not suck at video games. Uh, they suck at life. No, no, no. I'm saying they don't... Those, those kids, though, that I knew were be, like they they felt like being like a racist asshole was acceptable because they're online doing it with a bunch of other people if they and weren't no online really doing that you. you don't yeah. think that they would have felt they empowered were, by seeing someone else do it if they had never done it if, uh, they would they would shut right up as soon as there's an adult or a parent around or any of those but I'm like any if they, if they didn't do that kind of thing and mm-hmm. they saw donald trump saying these kinds of things i think that would be even for someone like that maybe even more empowering where you see someone breaking a barrier that you thought you weren't allowed to do as opposed yeah. to being used to it that would to me encourage them to vote for someone like that more so i just saying i don't think the link is video games i think those people play video games i think other people play video games no, well, no i was talking more about the headset and the online they they anonymousness are, of they, it all. They, i mean i i watched galisa's video and i i saw what the tone was and and she has a very quiet voice and she's just playing the game and the <laughs> things that these guys are saying which we're going to play in a little bit you know, they just overlap each other. Nobody is challenging anybody like dude. So it becomes normalized. Merck's, what were you going to say? Um, uh, Yeah, I, I want to support Ryan here a little bit in saying that th- these people also have a community with their friends who are also telling them and encouraging them, and they might go into a game together. Um, there, there's a certain degree in video games where you can block out people who are race, racist or bigoted in the video game in the headset. You can mute people. That's usually how I handle it if I'm playing Overwatch and I start hearing someone who's inappropriate in whatever way I cut it out. Would a kid do that or someone who's young? I'm not sure. I, I'd probably say no. I think the younger you are, the I, more I you... I would like to speak on that. Yes, yeah, but please. I just wanted to make the point that the younger you are, the more you might look up to like 18 and 20 year olds who are saying those things. Go ahead, Gleesa. Mm-hmm. Um, what are the reasons if, I mean, I didn't, um, mute people in these situations because I wanted to, uh, illustrate what was happening to people. Mm -hmm. So I let them talk so that I could record what they were saying. Yeah, they, they um, even yeah, they example. even but, suspected it. I, you can hear the conversation where they're like, "You, you I bet she's recording this," because they so they know um, they're being assholes. They know it. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Dana. I think but, there's. Um, oh, sorry. Go yeah, ahead. go ahead, Lisa. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to make the decision to leave for a couple of reasons. Um, sometimes you want to continue to communicate with your team, especially in a heavily team based game. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's difficult to say, all right, I'm just going to get out of this situation because I want to continue to try and work with teammates. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, uh, I find that it is difficult to leave when I am emotionally involved. Yeah. If I get angry or upset, I find it very difficult to step away from the situation as much as that would be a good idea for me. So you're saying that your your tendency is to stick it out because you'll feel better the next day if you stuck it out than if you walked away? No, that in that moment, in the moment. it's just so impossible for me to, to leave because I want to finish the fight. You know? Right, you won't let them have that. You won't let yeah. them have your exit. That's not a gift you're willing to and- give. That's an interesting. And sometimes I do, and and it's usually for the best, but I, I find it difficult to do so. All right, so let's talk about toxic players, because I I had to kind of look around the internet to find oh. out what these people are called. Oh, D- Danny, I, you I were was going to just piggyback really quick, yeah. and I was going to just say I I think there's something to say about how bold we become when we're in spaces where we're not really accountable for what we're saying. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you should see the beast I am in the car when I'm driving. Oh, yeah. And the things that I say <laughs> to people, I would never say those things to their face. Right. And, uh, yeah, and, and uh, when I play, uh, Sundays I play lesbian kickball, and uh, when I'm in that <laughs> outfield, which is like I very, very far fun. out, 
and I'm like far out in right field. And like when the other team messes up, I'm always like, ha ha. Like I, I'm a huge jerk when oh, nobody's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, s- some people know me as a huge jerk in person too, but I, but I really thrive when nobody's around. To oh, uh, yeah. Confront I, I think, it. Yeah. And, and that, I think we've all, I mean, when I'm alone in the house and I do something boneheaded, you know, you know, you will, if, if the windows were open, the neighbors would think that I'm insane because right. I'm just screaming the F word. You right, because I stub my stupid toe. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like no one's harming me. I simply stub my toe, and now I'm screaming like a freak. No, a stub toe is definitely that's f that's f word yeah, worthy. <laughs> but you know, it's an over. It's more than I like. If I were with my husband, I wouldn't be screaming like that. But there's something about being alone that makes you just go nuts because there's nobody to bear witness. Anyway, yeah. sorry, I'm getting in a little deep. I'm getting in the weeds. But there's nobody to bear witness and be like, "Oh my God, are you okay?" Right. Right, right. And face it, it feels good to say it. It just does. Word of valley. <laughs> oh, that's why you do it. Yeah, I mean, it just I was, does. I was like, crossing mm-hmm. the street the other day and some guy was like really trying to make a right turn in his car and I said some nasty stuff like, like not really under my breath. It turns out his window was down. He didn't hear me, but I thought he did it first when I saw the window was down. <laughs> And I immediately regretted it, but only because he might have heard it, not right. because I said it. Right. When right. You, you know you against car, car would win. Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but you didn't yeah, you versus sure. car, you versus car, not a contest. I think what? it's normal to one event then as, as basically yeah. the conclusion. Yeah. When, when you didn't have any accountability, you were comfortable. Guy, as yeah. soon as but, you realized that there could be some accountability, you recoiled. It's like, I don't want to get hit by a car yeah. or a fist. Right. And, and what's interesting is like, you know, we're describing instances where we're completely alone like in the car with the windows rolled up but there's something about playing this video game where you're finally doing the thing you wanted to do that you've been looking forward to doing all day you've got your mountain dew your headset (laughs) and you're just in this frame of mind where you're just like ah this is exactly what i want to be doing and you just kind of like zone out like you're like your id rises up past the rest of your super ego and all of, you know, I think it's this this trance like state where the truth is revealed about who you are, and it's not always very nice. I don't know if you would call it a truth. I mean, I should say I don't know if I would call it a truth. Um, I don't know if I would call it a truth because I think that you know the things people do when they're under the influence isn't necessarily the truth. It's the way they act in any given certain circumstance, right? I think so, it's their id, but that's not necessarily a truth. Super <clears throat> ego is part of that. Like all the other parts of you are part of it. So is it your truth? No. Is it your underlying urges potentially but i wouldn't call that a truth the things you do when you're asleep aren't your you know if you roll over in a certain way like those aren't the truth they're just getting i have a lot of intention in terms of my rollovers and and then let's not forget that like a lot of these um competitive team-based games can be like really infuriating and frustrating like no matter how much you love Mm -hmm. the game Mm -hmm. if something that you think is like bullshit goes on it can like really piss you off considering not only does it show bad on you but it it it, like your team gets mad too and you're working with others is is annoying yeah it's like a team project you know at at school like Mm -hmm. we're gonna get Mm -hmm. a b and it's not my fault um but one of the things that i was reading about uh is that you know you're trying to earn skins and weapons like you're trying to level up and you're trying to accomplish something and if you feel like and so a lot of people are playing the game even when they're sick of the game because they want to earn mm. a certain thing before they go to bed. And so if someone else yeah. ruins that for them, they're... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I don't mean to turn the whole conversation on its head. Sure. But this is what I don't get about video games. Hmm. Like, I, you don't win. Like, if you were gambling, and I'm not promoting gambling, but if you're gambling or you were trading stocks, you're at least making money. But what do you... What do you really get at the end of sweet skins? Gaming? Yeah, the, for like, kids, what do you, those skins are valuable. What do you get? You don't <laughs> get cash. You don't win cash. Yes. Not an actual. Yeah. And you can brag. But like, it. it what, yeah, but you yeah. can't trade in your feelings for cash. But Gleese is saying it's well, like so it, it's everything this, cash though. Is that the only reason you've done anything ever? <laughs> it's the same pleasure center that gets activated. The exact same. As but is the skill applicable anyplace else? Uh, we uh, Gleesa. You are building something. Uh, just no not, <laughs> i mean like hand-eye coordination you can do a bunch of <laughs> odd things with hand-eye coordination not yeah. a ton of it's like you could say the same thing about you sports. could play el conga hey hey you, i mean so, you're gonna... uh, so unlikely i'm gonna get a scholarship and go play football and be, be a big player right but it's fitness you're it's exercise i wouldn't Works. say that's why most kids do it though yeah i, I don't think so. and there's the social interaction you're building on social same for interaction yeah mercs in in one way if, if you're playing like 
for me, when I play a game, which for me is Overwatch, I don't care about the skins because that's something that comes randomly. Mm -hmm. I play competitively in a game, and you get a certain score based on the amount of games you win, and that goes on. Uh, and, and to me, that score is a validation of my skill in the game. And there's a pleasure that I have of getting better and being able to see more in the game, mm -hmm. and, and that it becomes a more complex or a more fluid interaction between it's me and the game, too. It's the same as if you play golf like and you reading? wait at the end of the week, if you play golf consistently at the same club, you're going to get your handicap report and it goes up on a board. And like that number tells everyone how good of a golfer you are. So it's the same thing. It's not actual money, but it really matters to people. Go ahead, Mark. And I had older brothers who were really into gaming when I was younger. So it mattered to me to be able to be like, oh, yeah, like I'm this good just like you are. Or if you have a lot of friends who are also competing in that way. So I think it can have, it it's can a have that quality. Yeah. We do respond to measurements, right? And um, No, Dana? <laughs> Dana? It's like but, uh, uh. it's like a grade in a class. Uh-huh. Game makers can also kind of produce artificial value by making certain items more rare than others. Suddenly, this thing that if if they if everything dropped at the same rate, then everything would be equally valuable or worthless. But if mm -hmm. one thing drops one in a hundred and the other drops like maybe every other time you play, then that one thing is like super rare and becomes more valuable. Okay, so that's like trading cars. Yeah, trading cards. And that, I mean, get, and like, that could have a real world application. There's not that many Joe Namaths. Well, and that know. being said, there are a lot of these games that people do sell the things that they attain in the game for real world money. So there is a market. Oh, okay. For that. Well, mm -hmm. tell me those. I'll play those. <laughs> 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 yeah. But that, I would say that's probably the minority. Of All games. right. So Gleesa is with us, and she's not revealing her face because tell us. Uh, well, I can t I can tell what's going to happen. I mean, it's pretty exciting. So when she gets ten thousand subscribers, she's going. There's going to be a big face reveal. I want to know how that is because if I get tickets to that show, like, how is that going to unfold for me? <laughs> it's just going to be a video. There's not going to be like a, like a grand fireworks <laughs> display or anything. Oh, uh, okay. So uh, I don't have to get I think there. You should stand early. underneath the sheet on a stage, and everyone should be there. And there's and you, there's <laughs> a countdown, and you an angel sing. Off. I would love that. I like the sheet idea. Yeah. I might use it. And doves yeah, yeah. come out. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so women tend to play um, actually more solitary role-playing games and multiplayer games, even though women are by nature quite social. Just dance. So why is this, Gleesa? Why would Dana rather uh, play the, the Just Dance by herself when women are actually pretty social? Is it because of what you've been encountering? It's probably... <laughs> in at least to a certain extent i have gotten a ton of messages from uh women and girls who are like well this is why i don't play online games and mm -hmm. this is why i don't use my microphone when i talk so there might be more women that play games that just you don't know they're women because they don't say anything so there was an article that is in diply.com and they kind of were posting some of reddit comments from female gamers um Reddit user the Haruka writes, uh, she wants people to know that once a girl reveals her gender by talking into the mic, she never knows whether she is going to get love or hate for it. Um, I wish they knew period jokes aren't funny, not even a bit, wrote Reddit user the weird chick you knew. And when guys are being shitty about someone for being female and another guy tells them to cut that crap out, that feels awesome, wrote Reddit user Trilobite 141. Lisa, you play Overwatch. Um, tell yes. us tell us what you love about the game. It's the uh, the theory and team comp and stuff that is interesting to me more than the aim and like uh, physical part. I like to think about well, this fight is going to go this way because we have these players on our team and they have these players on their team. They're going to use these ultimates and we have nothing, so I know we're going to lose this fight. So I just like doing all that planning out and this kind of like semi-mastermind position. You're the strategist. Yes. Yeah, and you love that. All right, so you made a video and you that's how I found you and you posted it on YouTube and you wanted to just show people... This is what I'm up against. I love this game, but this is what I have to sit and listen to. Yeah, why is there no team communication? Come on, guys. We need team communication if we're going to pull this one through. Team is the key. Anyone else mute the game. skunk? Anyone else mute Mercy? Head to mute her. Yeah. yeah, I don't like little dudes on this team. Yeah, she's clearly a young male. Yeah, I hate Hell yeah. Her.
Just in case anyone was curious what sexual harassment is. Are you a guy? That's it. Oh, 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 I see I think it's a single agenda. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's a we. Not just me. We sexually harassed her, bro. I have a good gender assuming this. They basically just raped her. Dude, no, she's gonna record this. Watch out. Dude, chill, bro. Chill. I can't get. I'm gonna get reported to the police for calling her a dude on the internet. You realize this is the internet? If you are you assuming her is gender? I'm sorry. Bro, I didn't assume your gender like that. Genderism is not what I stand for. Gender equality. Black American. That's really hill soldier you appreciate, bro. I mean, my I question is, that. if I can tell Joel that he's a young lady, and then... Like, Alright, so this goes on and on and on, and you can, you know, uh, trans, you can tell like, us more of the things equality. that they actually say, that's but they're sexism. basically just spewing, you know, every thought in their brain. That's what it feels like to me, with no regard for whether or not... Yeah, there's a, not a large amount of filtration in the... No, it's like, that's language. why I... Just, I think the numbing of the gameplay just makes some 14-year-old go like, why can't you say this, but you can say that? Like, just, uh, stop. It sounded more, and I'm not questioning what happened. I'm just saying, because all I saw was a small clip. Mm -hmm. It sounded more like one guy that was just being a jerk. Someone called him out, and then he just decided to amp it up one. Or was it, there might have been more than that, but that was what I heard. Well, all right. There, so it, expl there just, were two people who were um, playing together. They were cued to to each other, um, and they were intentionally throwing the game. They were trying to lose. Really. Uh, and on top of that, they were being rude. So why oh. would you intentionally throw the game? Uh, you can intentionally throw the game for a couple reasons. Uh, one is you're sick and tired of whatever your team's doing and you don't want to deal with it anymore, so you want the game to be over as soon as possible, throw the game. Uh, uh, and the other reason is because you want your rank to be lower. You gain and lose points based on games that you win. If you want to play at a lower rank for whatever reason, um, you have to throw games to get lower rank. Oh, so it's kind of trying to wrestle at a lighter weight by... Starving yourself. <laughs> Go ahead, Merx. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Do you feel like people ever throw a game to feel like they have some kind of power in the game? Because you can hold a whole oh, team yeah. hostage, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's oh, my wow. life strategy. That, that's like, especially if it's. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, go ahead, Mark. You, you could, um, for, for League of Legends, which I played a while back, the, the games would last 40 to 45 minutes. Oh, wow. So that was really at like 30 minutes into the game. If someone's all of a sudden, like, if you've been, they, if they feel annoyed from you in any way, they'll be like, fine, I warned you, I'm going to go feed. And then they'd, they'd aggressively go and do it for the rest of the game. Okay. So the, my version of it would be like tipping over the chessboard. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, all right. So, Glisa, describe what what the conversation felt like to you and more of the things that these these guys were just perfectly comfortable saying in your presence um i mean i had i'm not sure how much of what they say they mean or they feel to be actually true mm -hmm. i felt that their their entire goal here was to hurt me right they're bullies um from from the very beginning of the game they started out by calling me uh overweight and unattractive how would they need know anything about I, you literally can't tell but they um well, obviously, I'm a woman who plays games, so I can't be attractive because then I'd be out doing things with all of the men. I because see. That would be my my goal in life, obviously. It also sounds um, like they know exactly I think, I think how. That's how the thought process. It sounds like they know how to push uh, a female's buttons. They know what things would upset their sisters or their mothers, and so they just open with that. And that's like intentional cruelty, which is distressing yeah. since everyone's in. And, and, at the very beginning, which is why there isn't the, the beginning, I didn't record the beginning of the game, because mm -hmm. I figured it was banter. The, people say a lot of things that they don't mean it in the service of a joke. As long as the other person is okay with it, that's fine. Right? Like, you can say, oh, you're a big dumb idiot to your friend. Right. And, <laughs> and like, good old bitch. Got him. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. bad about it. Yeah. Um, no, I understand that part. Yeah. They, they know what you mean. Right, but you those are people that you actually know and if you if you have one friend who's like that has a really bad sense of direction and you're like, Oh, like, you know, Maggie has no idea where we are, then it's funny because she knows that about herself. But they don't know you and they don't know 
what it is that would bother you or what uh, what you would laugh at or what, what what's laughing at you or what's laughing with you and this is you know the kind of setting where i mean at it, a certain point it becomes obvious yeah it, in a conversation that the person that you were talking about is not having it mm -hmm. like there's a point where they're like they're not laughing at your jokes they're kind of shutting down they're refuting your statements and the, I think it is difficult to say that it at any point it is not clear that someone does not want you to continue so let me offer this as as a theory you, you guys talked about throwing the game are there certain guys like straight guys who in a pre in the presence of a woman that they know is never going to romantically like them they throw the game <laughs> like I, i'm just gonna have her hate me i'm a then I i'm in control of what happens i think these particular people were intending to throw the game before they knew i was female no, what I mean is throw the game in terms of you ever liking them. In terms, throw the whole oh, yeah. interaction between male and female. I'm in control of whether or not she likes me. I'll make sure she. That's, or is it I don't want to be beat by a woman? That's quite possible. Yeah, but I. But yeah, I. She's think not. She's not better than me. Like, she like most guys yeah. who have who who are have good self esteem are respectful to women because whether or not they're ever going to date the woman. They want to have good, healthy relationships with women because they just enjoy female energy and being around it. Uh, and and these guys are assuming that you, Glisa, are not going to like them. And so they're going to be the ones who control that situation by purposefully tipping over that relationship and saying, you know, that they were the ones who ensured that that connection was never going to happen rather than trying to be nice to you because oh. they don't know how to do that. They don't have that skill set. Like kind of rejecting her before they could be yes. Yes. rejected. Yes, quite possible. I, I have a question. Twitter started kicking people off that, you know, went over, uh, went beyond the boundaries of what's acceptable in terms of language. And yet is, Trump is still on? Is <laughs> that's, that's true. Uh, but here, it, does this, I don't know oh. who's in charge over here. Yeah, we're getting it's all that. different oh. gaming systems. Great yeah. transition. Yeah. I have some, Ooh, oh, nice segue. Nice, nice way done. Nice. Thank you. Done. Nicely done. Even... So, I earned my hummus today. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. So Blizzard is not just allowing you to report toxic players. They are proactively seeking out problem players via forums, Reddit, YouTube, etc. Uh, in other words, they're... They, they will kind of like use like a court case. So if someone's reported, let's say Ryan's reported like because he was being racist and sexist. You know, Ryan. And, <laughs> His truth comes and then, out when he's in that class. And then the people that work at Blizzard would actually look up Ryan and see how else he behaved online. Almost like a court case would find like a pattern of behavior on you. So a lot of the people using the game were like, oh man, they're, you know, they're, they're big brother. They're investigating. But they're actually like just backing up like, yeah, this guy has been douchey everywhere. Um, not just in this game. And so have they noticed your video, uh, Gleesa? Um, Not that I know of. Mm -hmm. I, I have no way of, of knowing if these people have had any sort of repercussions upon them for their actions. Um, I consider the show a repercussion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, in terms of in-game... Uh, the, no one from Blizzard has reached out to me and said anything about banning or uh, suspending accounts that these people have. How often do you run into the same? Uh, how often do you run into the same people in a game? Do you have to seek them out? Like how? Do, how is it arranged? Who you're going to play with? Uh, well, it's arranged based on um, presumed skill level, ah. which is based on your rank. Okay. So, and that's why um, people would purposefully down rank so that they could. Yes. Play against mm -hmm. uh, weaker players. So they can play with people who are worse. Yeah. I would um, do that. <laughs> I, I, I don't like losing. <laughs> Ryan's pretty competitive. It is fun to stomp. Yeah, I'd <laughs> rather stomp people than uh. be stomped on. <laughs> <laughs> to stomp uh, are you allowed to world. contact Blizzard? Are you allowed to send them a mm -hmm. email or an alert? Uh, yeah, but I frankly don't expect a response. Um... There's, I mean, they, make they it just open. get so many messages from people. They get a blizzard of information well, from people every day. It's like... They do. But I, I, I mean, tell us about the comments you've received on, on the video. Like, what are people saying who... Oh, my God. Uh, 
If you thought the video was bad, holy sh- uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the yeah. Comments, let it out. The comments are worse. The comments are worse. Oh my gosh. Um, oh my god. I get about half people going, "Oh, that sucks. People shouldn't do that," mm-hmm. and about half people saying, "You deserve it. You suck. You're a woman in a game. How dare you?" Oh my uh, god. You can't. Concept. Why are you complaining? You're seeking attention. Um, I just like. I had I had to stop reading comments yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. a while back because you know what, you know what I noticed what I I watched through your your video and what I noticed is what they they there's one kid who says that he's black and I don't know if he is or not I I can't I can't tell like they're it's like they're just talking I'm, like I don't I'm you, assuming that he is being sarcastic yeah. but it he's seems like that, that yeah. if they find out like one nugget of information about the player they will just grind mm-hmm. on that one thing and so you being a female yeah. is that's an evident i've seen, I've seen it, people do it to uh younger people who have higher voices still for mm-hmm. being younger and i've seen it do it to a guy who had an effeminate voice for being uh perceived as gay but does just, it, well, women are particularly a target, not yeah. to take away from those groups, yeah. but women are, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, Mark Marin, who has the very popular p- podcast WTF, mm-hmm. he said th- what he notices happening on comments after he has a female guest, because he does these long form interviews, yeah. is, is unbelievable. <gasps> and he, he, mm-hmm. sa- he said, a, I think he might have even started shutting them down. Um, but he said he, he was surprised by it. What is so threatening about women being good at something? I think it's, I can't speak to the male mind. It might be it's just a sense of entitlement. I'm not sure. Go ahead, I just, Dina. It yeah. just seems to I me really like they um, like resent having a woman in a space that they feel they're entitled to. They just don't want to have anyone there that they're not, um, that they feel is like infringing on their like supreme but it's also, right it's, to exist there. Yeah, it's the dominance too because it threatens their sense of dominance. Like at least I was better at this and at least I had that. So right. I, I do I do think that it speaks to self low self esteem to be to feel that that someone else is a threat that, that life is an either or situation instead of understanding that life is a collaboration and that when everyone does better, everyone does better. It's not I it Yes, there's that an is instinct. That's not the American way. I know. It's I know it's the instinct to crush and to stomp, and that's fun. But I think we have to limit that to just that competition itself, and not like all of life, because we have to lift each other up, or we're not going to make it through. Yeah. yeah, I I completely agree with you, and I think that there is just inherent in being a a white man, a man, a man, but especially a white man, I guess, in our society, is you just have um. You're enti- you feel entitled to things in a way that other people don't. And like if you decide that this space is for you, um, you can kind of, you know, convince yourself that that's the case. Whereas women and like more marginalized groups, they never come into a space and think this is for me and I am entitled to have this because when you talk about yeah. anything, when you talk about, you know, stand-up comedy or you talk about video games or you talk about, you know, a lot of aspects of technology, there's, um, it's insecure men who come into those spaces who feel like they're, they don't get something that they're supposed to from the rest of the world. So therefore the world owes them a place where they can succeed or on they, their own. Or they can be dominant. I'd right, just like yeah. to distinguish there though between white men feel that way versus insecure men feel that way and a lot of insecure men are white men like i i, I think it's like i'm just saying like because uh, i don't feel that well no i don't feel that way i'm just saying so for so like i'm you said insecure men those are the people who feel that way right i don't yeah. feel that way i'm a white man so i just right. well, you said saying that all white men are insecure i know but you did yeah. say white men feel that way well okay what i'm I should clarify. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. I'm as a white man, you might have a sense of entitlement. A white man will have a sense of entitlement that they can then exploit according to how their insecurities sure. lead them. Yeah, I agree. That, you know, maybe a different person wouldn't. Yeah, like I, I think like historically that since the 2016 election cycle, people have been like distinguishing like, you know, white males, white males, white males, and white males could have the exact same economic situation as any other color of male or or whatever it's just that they feel like something's being taken from them when someone else rises to their level and 
people of other colors are just like, oh, hey, <laughs> you know, because they were always aspiring. <laughs> and and it's, ne- it's not enough anymore to just be born white. Well, at least I'm white. You know, that seemed to be like, so I'm just going to sit here on the couch and play video games because at least I'm white. <laughs> oh, there's a black guy who went to Harvard and is now our president. Shit. Um, you know, at least I'm white is no longer going to do it. You may have to actually get a job, Dana. I think... I think it, it's human nature and we're all comfortable when we're around our peeps, you know, like if I'm with all gay women, there's a certain part of my head that just relaxes and there's a shorthand. I'm and understood then, here. And then as you diversify the group, we all have to sort of curb our behavior to make room and space for other for for that diversity. And but I think the difference is uh, men are, are I think people that are minorities are used to sort of like stepping to the side. Yeah, like it, like if you're exactly. if you're on if you're on a narrow sidewalk and you're walking and somebody bigger than you, you know, you're just sort of used to going, "Oh, okay, let me step aside." Whereas I think for men, there's always just there's always been this space for them. And so this idea that, "Oh, this is it's inconvenient for all of us, but it's like, wow, this is really inconvenient for me. But I really think it's just perceived that, you yeah. know, that this ownership of space that 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 is your perception that I'm going to spread out on the couch like Ryan did when he first got here. It's just like, <laughs> OK, <they're>, but, <laughs> but when can Dana, we not put that in this context? <laughs> when Dana, I jokingly of course, put in, went in like a lounging position saying, is this appropriate right. for the camera when there was no one else on the couch? Course, I wasn't but when entitled Dana, to the couch. But when Dana arrived, it didn't occur to you that you were not going to move, move. Like, it's like, OK, well, now the space is different and I'm sharing it with, with Dana. It's, oh, yeah. You know, it's not a threat to you. Oh, that. Oh, yes. OK, we can keep it in that context. Yeah. Then. I did. I did good. Yeah. Because you have good self-esteem. <laughs> OK, Wait, so, sure. I'm fine. Why don't I threaten you? Maybe you just don't know me white. well it's, enough. It's because, yeah. yeah. At I, least I, you're white. <laughs> we'll talk about his racism later. White. Please. I'm transparent. We can do a whole show focusing <laughs> yes, on why John. I don't feel threatened so, by you. <laughs> so the comments are definitely crazy, but there is a positive note. Mm-hmm. And this was from an apparent 12-year-old who says, how do these men not realize this is wrong? I mean, I'm 12. I, not, I know that this is awful. <laughs> Is that on Gleese's video? Yes. Oh, that's excellent. I like that 12 year old. Unfortunately, there's a bunch of replies to that that are just (laughs) terrible. (laughs) But (laughs) if we if we take him at his world, that's that's positive hope for the younger generation. Well, I also feel like that's fantastic. If you're a man, I mean, a a lot of these men are young men, but but if you're well, no, I mean, even a young man, you have a mother, you have a sister. You know, how would you feel if another man treated your sister, your mom, or your girlfriend that way? Well, yeah, I mean, the, I feel like I, children, yeah, go ahead. Go. I feel like children always have this perspective where the societal norms haven't quite fully infected their brains. Wow, because their spirits haven't been crushed to, like, yet. See, <laughs> yeah, things as more as they are, and less as society has conditioned people to see them. Well, we see that. So in- children often have these like super insightful comments we see that in positive and negative ways right you see kids who Mm -hmm. point things out that are rude to point out because they just say the observations they're seeing versus in this case children haven't learned to be awful so they're not awful unless they have and then sometimes they have learned they haven't learned not to be awful yeah so they are awful like a kid will point at your face and go like are you growing that pimple on purpose right you know, you're just like, Ooh, shut up. Put out your mole on your you know, face. I never Ooh. liked you. But they're not being mean. They're just asking a legitimate question. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they're exactly. They they're simply noticing because they're very astute. But yeah, but they also know, you know, a kid that has, I think that is being raised well, who has, who has all of his needs met, who's getting all the love and attention that he needs. Where are you going to find that? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Dina's kid. John's who's- kid. Who's cider? <laughs> hey, everybody's There's working. There's one right in the other room. <laughs> but everybody's working right now. I yeah, mean, but everybody has to work. That's why the you have the games. But that kid Maybe knows sitting that their kid. In, in any place where there's men who are who are being rude to a woman, that woman could be their sister or their mom. A kid who's evolved and understands that you just don't, you can't say these things without consequence. That kid is, is going to feel a sense of wanting to protect the person also, who, who's being demeaned it's also how the how the adults and the parents react to it 
Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I raised my son. I, you know, I don't think that he's too young for me to say things to him like, you know, this is how you treat women. And, you know, these are the types of things that are not okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to just like assume that he knows that because he's going to be affected. Um, you know, he spends a lot of time online. You know, he's going to yeah. pick up a lot of stuff. He will pick up so stuff. And I think I great sure men have knows. great moms. And his father should say the same thing. Yes, very important, John. All right, we're going to go to uh, Facebook feed time. And this is from my okay. friend, Leslie Sackheim. To all my Palms Junior High friends, who recognizes the famous guy in the photo who attended Palms and his current stage name? I'm going to say it's the guy on the right. It's, the top one says Ice T. Is it Ice T? Yeah. It's ice oh, tea. nice. The, wow. the guy who commercial with Ice T at a lemonade stand is a great commercial. Yeah. Yeah. Just putting that out there. So <laughs> that is Ice T. Ice T went to her. Whoa. He's the one on Law and Order SVU, right? Oh. Yes. Well, he was a rapper. Yeah. Initially. I know that. I kind of want to guess who the other people are. Yeah, let's yeah. guess who the other people are. Yeah. Are they famous too? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe on the left is Nina May. Oh, but that was, what, that was what was great about the comments is they went on to say, like, who can guess the guy in the middle? And someone who went to the school, like, totally had his name. <laughs> like, All right. <laughs> win at this. Um... All right, what's Twitter trending? I searched and searched, and all I could find today was um, it's Cow Appreciation Day. Hashtag Cow Appreciation Day. They, so, they are running out of holidays. Yeah, they are. <laughs> the sad thing is, is I remember Cow Appreciation Day from last year. Ooh. <laughs> That's yeah. how I feel about like National Waffle Day. I'm like, didn't this just happen? I remember that one. So someone's Twitter handle is National Days Tweets. This is not what cows look like. This is well, setting a false image of cows. <laughs> like, this is not what cows look like. This is just a very good looking cow, right? You know, you're not okay. supposed to judge cow, you know? things by their looks. saying. We say, oh, the magazine covers give this a is, false you know, impression of what people maybe look like. Maybe you That's, have a false impression. This is impression. a photoshopped I've seen plenty of cows in my day. Ryan, this is a photoshopped cow. Don't, you know, your own cow body image will not compare. They have a so, Snapchat filter on the cow. Cow, right. cow, the cow beauty is, standards. Don't have a cow man or do. It's Cow Appreciation Day. And the next one I think everyone's going to especially love. Look, oh. it's Bernie Sanders oh. and a cow. Happy Cow Appreciation Day. That's awesome. And what's interesting is the cow and Bernie both look the same today as they did 30 years ago wow. when this photograph was taken. <laughs> that's uh, like a pretty classic cow right there. That's a classic uh, senator as well, especially an independent one. We're a borderline socialist Democrat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Gleesa, for being with us. I hope you had a good time. And Gleesa, I think you should report to Blizzard. Yeah, but I, shout out your, your you YouTube should. name again. Let's get you at least 10 more subscribers just off of the strength of this podcast. Woo. Fractions of a penny. Fractions of a penny. Go follow her. I'm going to go subscribe to you right after the show. I'll get we, tickets to the reveal. We want that yes. chase reveal. Yeah. Reveal tickets. <laughs> if there's sheets. Reveal tickets. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, Dana Eagle, Ryan Tab, Aaron Linker, Merck Staskum, Dina Friedman, David Cord is here. We have Tom, uh, Thomas Hubble, Francesco. What's your last name? De what? Demanda. It's a mouthful. It's a mouthful. That's really good. <laughs> John Maddox, and I want to thank everyone for being with us. I'm Louise Palenker. We are your new favorite podcast. Please like and subscribe and leave a nice review in the iTunes store. And we'll be your best friend forever. We promise to do everything together. We love you. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>